Thank you all for joining us today. Uh, we worked very hard to line up the President of Iran, the National Security Advisor, and Will Toby. They all lined up today for us. So uh, thank you for being here. Uh, it's a very interesting topic. You, you know the topic, but this is uh, uh, Will is one of the, the few outsiders to have gone in to, to review this cache of documents. This is the result of an exchange between the head of Mossad and the Belfer Center at the Kennedy School of Government at, at uh, Harvard University, where, where Will is a senior fellow. Uh, and, and he's going to review with us the results of their findings from this uh, exploration of these documents. He'll explain a little bit about their background and, uh, and the nature of the project that took them there. Uh, Will doesn't really require an introduction to this group. Uh, well known, this is your third time here on my watch, I think, uh, speaking on, usually on, on the Iran uh, topic in one way or another. The last time, I think, was on the prospects for JCPOA and the arriving Trump administration. Uh, and again, a topic uh, that you might well have a question on at some point this morning. Uh, and um, uh, served previously as a Deputy Administrator at NNSA on Defense Nuclear Nonproliferation. Uh, so his comments will run 45 minutes or so? Oh, less, less well, than that, but I have plenty of time for Q&A. And, and then we'll open it up for Q&A. Uh, we don't have a roving microphone in this auditorium, so when it's Q&A time, you'll just have to stand up and project. Um, but we'll make sure you get into the conversation. Please join me in welcoming Will Toby. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you. Well, it's a great pleasure to be back among old friends, and that was a perfect introduction. Um, I don't need to say some of the things I was going to say in my introduction because of that. Um, it is an important topic, and I think the events in the news uh, today illustrate exactly how important it is. Um, some might dismiss the archive as containing nothing particularly new. Um, I think, I'll let you be the judge for yourselves, uh, that our findings would suggest otherwise, that there is new information contained in the archive. Now, I will also admit that it's highly uh, debatable as to whether or not that changes your view as to what the policy should be. And I should make clear that um, our group made no policy recommendations within uh, this. We were, our aim was to try and establish facts as best we could as we saw them, um, but not to, to go off into the policy recommendation realm. Um, our hope is that this will serve to put to bed some controversies that have dogged the issue on the American side, um, if only to make a, for a sharper and better debate on what policy options are available. So um, Brad mentioned the JCPOA, um, and I'm happy to talk about it, but it wasn't really a central feature of, of our work um, with this report. So uh, here's the report that I'm talking about. You can find it on the Belfer Center website. If you Google Iran Nuclear Archive, uh, you'll find it. Um, we actually haven't, uh, at least I haven't yet seen a paper copy of it, but <laughs> it's readily available. Um, and um, as I mentioned, uh, it's our hope that this will be, it's up to you to decide what, how compelling the evidence is that this is new and important, but we ran, we made some conclusions that things were new at least to us. I want to give you some context in order to make that judgment um, about the report, because I think it's important to know uh, who we were, how we got there, what our going in assumptions were, and what we were trying to do. So we had a small team, uh, which was really created on an ad hoc basis. Uh, as Brad mentioned, there were Israeli officials who came to the Belfer Center and talked about, their, about the archive. Um, this was in October of last year. Uh, they got some pushback from my colleagues at the Belfer Center about, well, how, how new is this really? Doesn't this just sort of go over old stuff that was pretty well known, doesn't change much? Um, 
I actually in that meeting suggested that one way to resolve that would be for the Israelis to invite a team from Balfour to come and see the documents for themselves. And the first reaction was, no, we're not going to do that. <laughs> and as the meeting went along, um, there was more and more receptivity to that idea. And in fact, they did issue an invitation. Um, and our team went in January. We were basically self-selected um, people who had been involved in this issue drawn from the intelligence project at the Belfer Center and the managing the atom project at the Belfer Center. Um, so it was composed of people who were primarily academics and people who have primarily been practitioners from the intelligence and policy communities uh, and included varying views on the uh, Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action. Um, first thing I should do is talk a little bit about caveats um, because, again, I want you to have the full context to make judgments about our conclusions. We didn't have access to the entire archive. The Israelis themselves only had 20% of the archive. We saw only a fraction of what, a small fraction of what the Israelis saw. We saw some summaries. Uh, we saw some facsimiles of original documents. And in a few cases, we saw original documents. The Israelis are being very careful to preserve uh, the forensic integrity of the archive. So they were understandably uh, cautious about producing original documents. We did not have authentication experts with us. I will say that um, I have, every time I see a US government official who might have a view as to the authenticity of this archive, I ask him or her about it. And I have not yet run across anyone who has doubted it, but it's possible. We didn't have Farsi speakers. Uh, the Israelis translated the, the key documents. Um, and we relied upon their translations. We received some of the documents in electronic form afterwards, and we did look in retrospect at their translations and didn't find anything particularly egregious. We also saw a considerable number of uh, engineering drawings, photographs, uh, stills taken from films, and other things that, frankly, don't particularly need to be uh, translated. Um, and we can't make any judgment about whether or not there was exculpatory evidence that was in the archive that we did not see. Just don't know whether that. I don't have any reason to believe that there was, but we can't say anything one way or the other about that. I would say, I would note, this was the conclusion in the document. And oh, I should have said at the outset, among our team, uh, this was a complete consensus document. Um, I've spent, I don't know, a lot of years working on committees coming up with documents, both in government and in academia. And this was by far the easiest one I've ever had. There was virtually no controversy among our group, despite fairly disparate perspectives coming into the, the issue. So in our view, this sits pretty well with other things that are known about the program to include uh, uh, the um, International Atomic Energy Agencies report on the possible military dimensions of the Iranian program. So uh, Brad mentioned some of this. There were Israeli government officials who came to Belfer in October of last year. Um, they were challenged. Um, there was uh, an invitation forthcoming. Um, we went in January um, with the aim of trying to resolve or clarifying some of the issues in part to resolve or clarify these issues to serve as the foundation for debate on what policy should be used going forward. We paid our own way. The discussions were completely unclassified. So, um, and there were no restrictions placed on us by the Israelis in terms of what we could share. So I can be completely candid about what I was told by them um, because of that. Uh, and frankly, to be uh, fair, I think they were, one of their purposes was so that we would share the, the results. And that's, again, something you should know in terms of context. Um, 
So we received briefings and examined uh, a few original and many copies of archive documents, uh, and then they sent us electronic or gave to us electronic files of, of a large number of documents, but still a very small fraction of the overall archive. Um, so what was the archive? I don't know how familiar this group is with it, but um, uh, in April of last year, uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu uh, announced that Israeli intelligence had seized a large amount of material from a warehouse in Iran. Um, that included some 55,000 pages of documents and a further 55,000 documents that were on CDs, including uh, photographs and videos. Uh, the collection dates from 1999 to about 2003, um, when a halt order was apparently placed on the uh, program. Um, after the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action was concluded, the Iranian government apparently sent out a call to uh, people within the country to turn in their documents, collect them to a centralized location. Now here I'm, I'm inferring or speculating, but I imagine with uh, the likely presence of International Atomic Energy Agency personnel in Iran, they were hoping that these documents would be safer if they were all in one place. Um, and they were placed in a warehouse, um, and in that warehouse there were dozens, about three dozen safes that were in three shipping containers on two flatbed trailers. And this warehouse was, um, had no visible uh, signs of security. There weren't double wire, fe double fences, there weren't, and, it's, and actually, if you, um, the cover of the report is a Google Earth uh, photo of the neighborhood where I know it's kind of hard to see, but if you look um, at about uh, where Aaron Arnold and Matt Bunn's names are, that's about where the building is. So it's a crowded neighborhood with lots of warehouses, nothing in, that would otherwise set it apart. Um, It's important to know that uh, Israel removed only tw about 20% of the documents. They believe that they got a fair summary of the entire program, in part because of these 200 contact, uh, compact disks, which provide something of a skeleton, even if they didn't provide all the meaty details or only some of the meaty details that were available in other areas. Another uh, aspect of the um, archive that I think is worth considering is exactly how well organized it was. I've seen the documentation associated with uh, nuclear programs in Libya and Iraq, and this by far is much better organized. It was a much better organized program, the documentation is better organized, and their archiving of it was better organized. And, and Israeli said to me that this was not a library for daily use, but it also was not um, something that was, was being put away never to be used again. It was somewhere in the middle. And of course, that's inferential, but uh, the one example, these binders, and the binders would fill a group of bookshelves roughly the size of the, of the slide up there, uh, were all color-coded. So, you know, having to do with either nuclear weapons design or interactions with the IAEA or other things. So it was very well organized, and they were clearly trying to uh, preserve their access to the, the knowledge. For what purpose? It's not clear. So here's, uh, I don't know if you can see the little star. Is there a laser here? Yeah. Well, anyway, the star that's uh, um, the asterisk that's, in the southern suburbs is where the, um, the warehouse was. And presumably, uh, because of how they had loaded it in the warehouse, um, if the IAEA had uh, come, gotten word on it, uh, it these archives could have been removed relatively quickly. 
we were told that the number of Iranians who knew about the location was roughly the size of our team, which was six people. Pretty closely held secret. So um, let me move now to our um, conclusions about the uh, program. Um, we have three on clarifying Iran's nuclear program and three on implications for non-proliferation. Um, the first one, strategic intent. Iran's senior leadership approved a program to manufacture nuclear weapons and carry out an underground nuclear test. This was a coherent, organized, top-down program, not a rogue operation. Um, there were a group of senior officials to include the defense minister who had signed off on this program. The defense minister received regular briefings on it uh, approximately, approximately once a month. Um, the supreme leader required that he sign off on any foreign participation. So the idea that somehow this was uh, conducted by a small element without knowledge of Iran's leadership is, is given lie by the archive. Um, I asked whether they had come across the fatwa that supposedly made pursuit of nuclear weapons um, illegal. Uh, the Israelis have not found the fatwa in the, in the archive. Um, the second um, conclusion was on technical progress. And the, the evidence reveals that Iran's nuclear weapons program made substantially more progress than described by the International Atomic Energy Agency's final assessment. And just to remind you, their assessment was that the Iranian program did, quote, did not advance beyond feasibility and scientific studies, unquote. Um, what the archive reveals is that there were five nuclear weapons designs um, and that they were relatively sophisticated. We did not see the designs ourselves. The Israelis withheld anything that would be considered critical nuclear weapons design information, and frankly, we thought that was appropriate. Uh, they had done work on um, nuclear testing to include site surveys and uh, design work on tunnel building. Um, and they had ordered the equipment for and done the excavations for a uranium metallurgy facility, which would have been appropriate for casting pits. So those are just three examples of, of the work being considerably further along than uh, feasibility and scientific studies. Third conclusion on reconstitution capability. Iran possesses knowledge and capabilities that provide a foundation for reconstituting its nuclear weapons program. Um, we don't obviously know where Iran's intentions lie. Um, as I mentioned, this information ceases roughly in the 2003 range. We were told that approximately 70% of the people who worked for Project Ahmad, the project that I'm describing, um, were subsequently hired by an Iranian organization called SPND. That organization was sanctioned by the Obama administration as being involved in a nuclear weapons development program. So exactly what those uh, individuals are up to, uh, to include the leader of Project Ahmad, um, remains unclear. Uh, but there is considerable capacity still within Iran. Just to cite one example, uh, the equipment that would be useful for shaping pits is neither declared to the IAEA, nor is there any evidence that it's outside of, of Iran. Implications for non-proliferation. Um, foreign assistance and procurement. The archive indicates that Iran benefited from much more foreign assistance than previously understood, though not help from foreign governments. And it's important to emphasize that last point. I mentioned that there were five nuclear weapons designs. Four of those were of foreign origin and um, they were judged by Israeli officials to be sophisticated weapons designs. They actually thought the best one 
was uh, an Iranian design that was something of a composite of the, of the designs that they had um, obtained elsewhere. Now, uh, for some of us who have worked on cooperative threat reduction programs, um, this was disappointing news because we thought that we had done pretty good job, not a perfect job, but a pretty good job at containing the spread of information. And the notion that up to 20 individuals had, foreign individuals had assisted the nuclear weapons program in Iran was bad news. Fifth conclusion, um, the detection of secret facilities and activities. The archive confirms that Iran engaged in a protracted covert effort to develop nuclear weapons whose full extent was undetected for an extended period. Now, obviously, uh, the IAEA, with its conclusions about the so-called possible military dimensions of Iran's program, some of the statements by the US government, even the declassified national intelligence estimate that noted that Iran had halted its nuclear weapons program, um, you can't halt something that you never had. So uh, even that national intelligence estimate had implicitly uh, talked about a nuclear weapons program. But it's also, it was clear to us that there were some things that had gone unnoticed. And in these, some of these were important. Um, the Israelis told us that while they had sensed the excavation of this facility that would be the uranium metallurgy facility, they had not associated it with the nuclear weapons program. And they didn't know that the equipment for it had been purchased, although not installed. It was uh, not installed because of the timing of the halt order that came. So uh, that would be one example of the sort of things that were unknown, and I think those are important details. There are even, I, I would say, for, in the political dimension, the fact that um, this program was conducted on orders of five senior individuals with the knowledge, according to the archive documents of the Supreme Leader, is a new development. Always in the past, there had been some ambiguity about exactly who knew what about this program. And I would also note that there was, in terms of the detection, um, there, was, there were indications from the documents that the International Atomic Agent, Energy Agency had both been both lied to and spied upon uh, by Iran. Um, and they were working out their stories um, in the documents that are part of the archive. Six, on next steps. As I said, we didn't reach a conclusion about or make policy recommendations. Um, as close as we get is that the, the material in the archive raises issues and reveals capabilities that will need to be addressed by the parties to the Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action and the International Atomic Energy Agency, and that will need to be considered in any future negotiation with Iran. In other words, in our judgment, one cannot look at this material and say, well, this all dates from a period of 1999 to 2003. That's water over the dam. We don't need to worry about it. Um, as reflected in an earlier conclusion, it indicates an ongoing uh, capability and therefore something that whatever policy you wish to undertake toward Iran, you will have to take into account the contents of the archive. So that's it. Thank you very much.